Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. This is Pastor Lisa and along with my brother, the Reverend David Petty, we have put together a collaboration this evening for our Good Friday worship. I'm glad that you've joined us and I'm excited to share with you in this new way of worship. Usually we have joined together and we've lit lots of candles and we have choirs and sometimes we even have orchestra. But this evening, you will have visual and then you will also have audio. You will have a time to hear scripture and a time to listen to some original narrations. And so I hope this evening that you will spend some time in prayer. And even though we are apart and that this service is different, you would remember the final hours of Jesus and remember that it is not the end of the story, that the story does continue. We hope to see you again Easter morning.
This is a day to remember. We remember the man who reached out and walked on. We remember the man who preached and prayed. We remember the man who healed and taught. We remember Jesus. We remember Christ our Lord. We remember the processional of palms. We remember the night he gathered with friends. We remember the confusion and lack of understanding. We remember his love and compassion. We remember his new covenant and broken bread and cup. We remember the disciples' broken promises of commitment. We remember the disciples' fear and denial. We remember his willingness to do the will of God. We remember this day and give thanks to God for Jesus, our Christ. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let's take a moment and be in prayer. Amazing and loving God, we come to you this evening, recognizing how different it is from any other Good Friday we have experienced. And yet we know you are with us, even apart. Lord, open our hearts that we would be open to your love poured out for us as we remember the events of this night. This night in which Jesus was betrayed, denied, and goes to the cross. Lord, for all of your sacrifice for us, we give you thanks. This evening, remind us of those who are unable to join us in worship because they are working, working hard so we may stay home and be safe. Lord, let us remember those in our community and throughout the world who are in need. Allow us to give of what we have so that others may live fully. We remember this night and we give you thanks in your son's precious and holy name. Amen.
I can't believe you call me The Rock. As if I was sturdy and can't be broken. Apparently, he was just talking about limestone, easily breakable. Less than an hour ago, I was denying I ever knew the man because I was scared. I was so frightened that a group of people would recognize me and want to kill me, too. After they took him away in the garden, after he healed the soldier's ear, and even as they arrested him, drug him away, he showed such compassion. I was so afraid. I was afraid I would have to go with him. They would remember what he said and find us all who were with him and drag us to trial too. What if they knew? What if they knew how much he loved, how well he taught, and what he meant to us? When my brother Andrew and I met Jesus, our family was living in Capernaum. We ran the fishing business with our father. One day, this man, who had been teaching, asked to come aboard. My brother Andrew said he knew him because he was the one that John the Baptizer had been talking about. So he came aboard. He taught from the boat for a bit, and then before we went back to shore, he told us to go deeper and to cast our nets. <laughs> Truth be told, we almost didn't listen. What did this man know about fishing anyway? But just for fun, we did and our boat almost tipped over by the load we hauled in. I remember then that I fell to his feet and told him I was a sinner and he should want nothing to do with me. But he looked at me with those eyes, those eyes that were like the reflection of the sea after a storm, so calm and steady. And he said, From now on, I will make you fish for people. That day on, I would follow this man anywhere until tonight when they asked me, weren't you with him, Jesus? And I said, no, I did not know him. Why didn't he just leave me on that boat, a confessed sinner? And still, he called my name, believed in me, and called me to be the rock. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what we have deserved, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. 13, I, th I think it was, 13 hours of labor so many years ago before I delivered my baby boy. Twelve men gathered around him for these last few years, Peter and James and John, and 11 minutes have gone by since they placed him on this cross, and each minute breaks my heart over and over again. Ten commandments were given to our people by our God, and he taught us from them. 
to love and love some more. Nine children ran by and mentioned they saw him last time he was preaching on the mountain. Eight seconds between focusing my eyes on each new person that passes. Seven perfect days of creation, ending with rest on this final day. And I can't help but see that may, just maybe, he is finally finding rest from this tormenting world. Six of the Pharisees are standing off in the distance, jeering and pointing as he hangs here. Five loaves of bread were broken and fed thousands by his blessing. Four women, including myself, have stayed here, trying desperately to pray between tears. Three years of his teaching, healing, and loving, and now this. Two men hang at his sides, guilty, next to my innocent son. One God, the God of Israel, the Lord is one, my son, and here he dies for love of you. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home.
I could not believe the power he displayed. When I met Jesus, I was a mess. My life was in shambles. I'd struggled with substance abuse, alcohol, and whatever drugs I could get my hands on. My family is wealthy, but they disowned me because of my demons. I had a disease no one knew how to cure and suffered severely from a disorder no one could name. But they said my brain didn't work right. My mental health suffered. I was unclean in the eyes of most of the town and to top it off, I was without a home. I was suffering from the trivecta of sins, homeless addict, mentally ill and physically ill. The priests said I was demon possessed and maybe that was true because I could never get a handle on any of it. As soon as one part of my problem seemed manageable, Another would flare up. I tried everything I could and nothing. And no one seemed to help. But then came Jesus. He looked at me. He saw me. Not like he saw my physical appearance, which at the time he met me was in disarray but he saw into my spirit. His eyes were so calm and he seemed so peaceful. Yet he yelled just like I'd seen him do to others before. Come out of her. And before I knew it, my spirit, my soul, my whole being was awake and alive and as clean as I ever felt. The desire for anything else in my life paled in comparison to my desire to follow this man and learn his ways and what was behind those eyes. He gave me my life back. He gave me my family and my city back. Once again, my community surrounded me and saw me. I was no longer a leper or an outcast, but I was Mary. My father threw his arms open and I was again part of his world. From that day on, I vowed to follow this Jesus wherever he went. I committed my familial wealth to help fund his ministry, and I learned how deeply his love and the love of God could impact a hurting world. His power was undeniable, and yet, here he is on the cross, his eyes weak and his power gone. But his love, I can still feel his love even now. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I heard the murmuring as they passed by me. They've seen me a dozen times before, and yet no one knows my name or my story. To them, I'm not much more than a beggar asking for a handout. If they only knew how hard it is to reach out this hand into the unknown. It's taken me years to develop the courage to even ask for help. And yet they see me as weak, disabled, needy. 
Who sinned? The question came. They were asking if it was my fault or my parents' fault that I was born blind. They wanted to know what family secret sin had resulted in my misfortune. Was it me? The first time I heard his voice, I could tell it was him. Unlike his disciples who were questioning curious crafts, his voice was warm, compassionate. He told them I was born blind so God could work through me. He said he was the light. Perhaps, I thought, he could even bring light to my darkened vision. Before long, I heard him spit. I've heard the sound before. It's a sound I hear before my outstretched hand gets wet or my face becomes covered in the physical manifestation of societal disgust at my condition. I've been spat on before and I've had dirt kicked upon me, but this time there was no disgust coming my way. Instead, he spread clay over my eyes and he anointed me and told me to wash. I'll never forget how people looked at me the first time I saw them. How strange to put a face to a name. I did not recognize them and they did not recognize me. It was as if Jesus' work in me had created a new self within. I was a new man. No more did they see me as a beggar, no longer as a blind man with an outstretched arm. I was human. My sight was restored. My humanity realized. Because of what he did for me, I will spend the rest of my days telling others of what he has done and who he is. The day I first saw clearly was the day I knew for sure that this man truly was the Son of God. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Were you-